Hey guys, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is Ania and today we are going to be doing a review of my Archer and Olive notebook. This has been my notebook for the past six months. Unfortunately, I can only fit six months in my bullet journal, but I've definitely had a good time with it. And I just kind of want to talk about like what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and whether I'm going to be purchasing another one. So yeah, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, and also leave a comment down below because I respond to every single comment. I always say my comment section is the best place to be. But anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've used this notebook for the past six months, so I've had the opportunity to use almost every single page in this notebook. It is completely full, and I will be purchasing a notebook for 2021 to start off the year. As I mentioned, I said almost every page. We'll see in the flip through that there's a couple pages that went untouched, but it happens. So besides having a dedicated page to put your name on, this notebook has no other pre set up pages. The pages are not numbered and there's 160 dotted pages. So right here is the page for your name and your information. And then when you flip it, you get a white page, normal page, and then this is gonna be your first dotted page in your notebook. The paper is 160 GSM, which means that the paper holds up really well with various different mediums. Although I would urge you to be careful with heavy watercolors and alcohol markers, as they are kind of the only mediums that really don't hold up well with this kind of paper. So this notebook is vegan and eco-friendly packaging is on the notebooks and they come in so many beautiful designs and different covers. But one of my favorite features of this notebook is actually the bright white paper. So as you can see, the paper is very bright and when you put colors on it, the colors really stand out against it, which is one of my favorite things about this notebook. So. I previously came from a Dingbats notebook, and don't get me wrong, I love my Dingbats notebook. This is the one I actually purchased and used for the first part of 2020. As you can see, it's the elephant theme, and don't get me wrong, I really, really loved this notebook. The only downside that I had about this notebook was the paper. As you can see, it is very creamy compared to the Archer and Olive, which has very bright white paper. So it made it a little bit difficult to try and figure out what I thought would look good in this notebook because I didn't want the creaminess to take away from any like pictures or drawings or anything like that that I may put in a bullet journal. So that was my only downside. But other than that, with the Dingbats, I loved the size. This is their B5 size. I loved the design. I like what the company stands for and that they're helping different wildlife and great company but this is an Archer Olive review so let's get back into that. So this notebook also comes with a pen loop located on the side, a clasp to close your journal. This notebook has two bookmarks so one of them having this little charm on it which I think is really really cute and the other one just being like a regular um, bookmark. You also, in the back of this journal, get a little pocket to put extra paper, loose paper in. So all of those are really great. The one thing I will mention though, is that the size of this particular notebook is the B5 size, which is bigger than the standard A5 size. So I actually ordered this size by accident, but just decided to stick with it for the duration of 2020. As I mentioned, Dingbat's B5 is smaller than this B5, so when I was ordering this one, I was thinking it was going to be the same size. I was wrong. I felt that my previous notebook was actually like the perfect size for me, but this one was just a little bit too big. Some people have it and they use it and they love it. I feel like if you work from home and you need to keep track of a lot of tasks day to day, or if you're a full-time student, or if you're a student and you're going and you're working, you know, on other projects such as YouTube and other streams of income or whatever, a bigger notebook could be a great thing for you. But for me, I kind of felt like it was just too big. I didn't necessarily need the extra space. Although I guess looking back at it, it was nice to have it. So the one thing I want to mention also before we get into the rest of the flip through is that although I love the cover of this notebook, 
going with a matte black finish for the notebook leaves a lot of room for things to kind of stick to it so I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera but there are a couple spots on my bullet journal that are just from wear and just from having it for six months and this is only after six months of use now I keep this in a backpack most of the time or I keep it at home so I'm not like taking it out with me much but there's a lot of wear on this so it's a very well loved notebook but just be aware if you're planning on buying a notebook like this that this can and will happen and I haven't found a way to really get them off so I kind of just Okay, so now we can jump into the flip through part of this video. So as you can see, we're jumping in with July. I started this notebook right in the six month mark of the year. So this goes from July all the way till December 2020. If you're interested in seeing these spreads more in depth, um, you can go to my Instagram account and they will be there. I enjoyed, like I said, I enjoyed using this bullet journal throughout the year and trying different stuff in it, especially because I had so much real estate that I didn't have before. So I feel like I did try a lot of things that I ended up enjoying and some stuff that I ended up sticking with, especially this weekly layout. You'll see a lot. It was um, definitely a staple in my bullet journal and something that really worked for me from the beginning of 2020. And we'll see in December that I actually switched it up to a style that I've never tried before, but that I've always wanted to try. This year, I, um, you know, I feel like everybody kind of went through it this year. It was just a really rough year. It was hard to stay motivated in my bullet journal and my goals and school and just everything. Just staying on top of all the things I wanted to accomplish. It kind of just seemed, I don't want to say meaningless because that sounds bleak, but just I wasn't as motivated as I feel like I normally am and it definitely shows although I guess I did end up starting my Instagram and my YouTube and those have been two great things that have, that have come out of this year so I can't complain too much I think that a lot of the spreads that I created this year were just things that I hadn't done before that I wanted to do. And because this is kind of a first look at my bullet journal, I felt like it was kind of fun to go on this journey with all of these new people that I never met before in this community that I think is amazing. So I've been having a great time with that. Yeah, I mean, just from doing a space theme with like these little stickers that I drew myself. The only sticker in this theme that I did not draw myself was the astronaut on the first page which I made very transparent in my plan with me and on Instagram because I never want to steal anybody's work but I was very inspired by that picture and I just like the way that it came out all together. Um, so as you can see I didn't really have an issue with ghosting or bleed through at all in this bullet journal and one of the main factors is because I really use like Tombow dual brush pens, um, Tombow Food and No Skate brush pens, um, Micron pens, uh, just kind of things like that, like normal bullet journal fan favorites. So I probably, you know, don't have as bad of an experience as other people may have if they're using harsher mediums. So that may have been lucky on my part, but I'm big on using craft paper and stickers and, um, Crayola super tips and stuff for color and to make my spreads more interesting. So Yeah, that's kind of what I've used Now this is where we get to the part where I said I almost use all the pages these were the pages that I was supposed to continue for October, but honestly, I was kind of having a really rough month, so I never ended up planning after week one, which was really bad. It really threw me off. It happens sometimes you're not going to 100% be on top of your bullet journal every month or every day, you know, but as you can see in November with my Among Us spread, <laughs> Um, I was able to get back on track and this is completely like filled, which is awesome. I was very happy about that because you know it helped me kind of get back into the groove of things and how I wanted things to be 
So there's still a couple empty spreads, but you know, for the most part, I did use my bullet journal every day in the month of November, so. And also coming from the Dingbats journal, which did have ghosting, um, you know, it's very fresh to just be able to kind of make the spreads that I want and not have to worry about the next page being ruined. Do I think this notebook is worth it? Absolutely. Um, I think it's one of the best notebooks on the market. I think a lot of people hype it up and I think the hype is 100% like warranted. It's a great notebook. Would I purchase it again? Yes. In fact, I actually already ordered my 2021 bullet journal and the migration video will be coming very soon to the channel. So I hope you guys are excited about that. And with all that being said, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.